Buyurun hocam. Bir 10 saniye içerisinde başlayabilirsiniz. Tamam. Hello everyone. Welcome to our lecture. This is the second week of a five week course on derivatives. Today we are going to discuss forwards. Before we start our discussion on forwards, let me briefly go over with what we covered in the last week lecture. Before do, uh, doing so, we're doing it in order to not to have any connections issues, I'm going to disable my video and continue my discussion. Last week, we started with a brief overview of derivatives markets. We began by the definition of what we mean by a derivative instrument. We define derivatives instruments as the financial instruments whose returns are derived from those of another financial instrument. Then we briefly discussed major types of derivatives such as forwards, futures, swaps, and options. We then talk about uh, how they function. We also discuss why in the last 40 years, the world of finance and capital markets has experienced a quite spectacular transformation in derivatives markets. Then we talk about three main trader types in these markets, so-called hedgers, speculators, and arbitrageurs, who use these derivative instruments for different purposes. Hedgers use derivatives to eliminate uncertainty by transferring the risk they face from potential future movements in prices of the underlying assets. Speculators, on the other hand, use this derivative in instrument to make profits by betting on the future direction of market price of the underlying assets. Arbitrageurs use derivatives to take offsetting position in two or more instruments to lock in a profit. Then we moved to the topic of where these instruments are traded. There are basically two venues in which derivatives contract traded, trade. These are exchange traded markets and over the counter markets. Exchange traded derivatives are fully standardized and their contract terms are designed by derivatives exchange. Is Instrument in OTC markets are generally privately negotiated between market makers and their clients. That's why they are not standardized in general. And it, actually it is custom made to fit clients needs. Finally, we discussed two of the most important functions of derivatives markets, which are the transfer of risk and price discovery. As we mentioned before, there are four major types of derivative instruments. In some respect, these may be regarded as building blocks and can be categorized as forwards, futures, swaps, and options. Today, we are going to talk about the first building block of derivatives instrument, so-called forwards. First, we will define what we mean by a forward contract. Then what purposes we can use these contracts. And then it's going to be followed by the advantages and disadvantages. We will finish our discussion with a brief introduction to pricing of such contracts. Let us start now our discussion on the first building blocks of derivatives product, forwards. A forward contract is an OTC over the counter agreement between 
two parties to exchange an underlying asset for an agreed upon price, so-called the forward price or delivery price, at a given time, at a given point in time in the future, at the expiry date or maturity date. The parties agreeing to the forward contract are known as counterparties. The party that has agreed to buy the underlying asset as a long position, the party that has agreed to sell the underlying asset as a short position. Remember, this is a contractual agreement between two parties for the delivery of physical assets, which can be oil, gold, or foreign exchange at a certain time in the futures for a certain price. That is, price is fixed at the inception of the contract. However, no actual transfer of ownership occurs in the underlying asset when the contract is initiated. Instead, there is simply an agreement to transfer ownership of the underlying asset at some future delivery dates. This is the most important difference between forward contract and future uh, spot contract. A spot contract is also an agreement between two parties to exchange an underlying asset for an agreed upon price or spot price or the delivery price. But as opposed to forward markets, forward contract, the sale is made, the payment is remitted, and the good or security is delivered immediately or shortly thereafter. Remember, again, these contract, forward contracts are traded in the OTC markets. Of course, the forward price uh, may be, or um, generally, are different for, uh, for contracts of different maturities. Let us look at one simple example here. Or before we do that, uh, let me go back here. Remember here again, when you sign a forward contract, you can lock in a price exempt for buying or selling a security. Ex post, uh, after the uh, delivery, you can make profits or loss from this uh, contract. That depends on the spot price at the expiration. If the price of underlying assets rises, then the party who has a long position in the contract gains, while the party who has a short position loses. Since it is traded between two parties in the old counter market, there's a small possibility that either side can default on the contract. Therefore, forward contracts are mainly between big institutions or between a financial institution and one of their clients. Forward contracts uh, are most popular in currency and interest rate market. That doesn't mean that there is no forward contract in commodities. It is very common. Let us look at one simple uh, forward contracts here. Let me re-emphasize that a forward contract is an OTC agreement between two parties to exchange for an underlying asset for an agreed upon price, the so-called forward price, and at a given point in time in the future. Here, consider the following example, for example. You are an oil producer and expecting to produce 1 million barrel of oil in six months. You don't have or any oil at your disposal right now, but you will have it in six months. That's why the exchange cannot be completed at this time. You cannot make a, any delivery. You will have the oil in six months. So a oil buyer, party B in this case, also doesn't need oil right now. They need the oil in six months. Oil buyer and seller does agree that the oil will be delivered in six months and that the oil buyer will pay $50 per barrel 
in six months upon the delivery of the one million barrel of oil. Today, I mean, sorry, total payout at the expiry from party B to party A is $50 million. $50 per barrel and then 50, uh, 1 million uh, barrel total uh, stuff. So the cost is $50 million in exchange for 1 million barrel of oil in six months. Transfer of ownership for party A, 1 million barrel of oil, and for party B, it is $1 million, $50 million occurred in six months time, not the, at the in, uh, inception of contract. In this forward contract, WTI crude is the underlying assets. Trader A, oil seller, is set to be short the contract since he must deliver oil in six months. Trader B, the oil buyer, is set to be long the contract since he receives the oil, delivery of oil in six months. If at the end of six months, the price of oil is at $60, then this trader with a long position has a profit of $10 million. And the trader with a short position loses $10 million. Basically, instead of selling oil $60, oil seller have to deliver the oil at $50. He's making $10 uh, loss per barrel. But if the price of oil is $45 at the end of six months, then the trader with a long position loses 5 million. The one with a short position has a profit of 5 million. However, the important thing here is regardless of price movements from now and six months time, both party enjoyed being hedged against price fluctuation. From its simplicity of the contract and its obvious usefulness in resolving uncertainty about the future, it's not surprising that such contracts have had a very long history. Consider you are a farmer, you are up against very volatile price environments. You will have your output at the harvesting season, but you don't have any clue what price you can get for your harvest. The price in six months depends on many things, including weather condition in production areas, other product producer activities, economic condition in your country and abroad. So by agreeing uh, into a forward contract, you are eliminating any risk of price fluctuation, down movement or up movement. You might gain or lose from this hedge, but at the end, at the end of the game, it is your hedging hedge price you are going to get, regardless of what price at the expiration, what spot price at the expiration. Of course, that is uh, the uh, delivery was uh, physical. How about cash settlements? What if forward settled in cash? Basically, you can easily design cash settled contract. At the maturity of such contracts, with cash settlement, the oil buyer pays the counterparty oil seller the difference between $50 and the spot price at the maturity. If the difference is negative, the counterparty pays the buyer. The oil buyer then buys the oil in the spot market. For example, if the spot price is $60, the party A, which is seller, pays the party B the difference between spot price and forward price of $10. If the price, spot price at the maturity 45, the party B, which is buyer, pays the party A, which is seller, $5. Whatever the spot price, the net cost or net payout to the buyer or seller is the forward price, $50. So you don't have to worry about what price we are going to see at the end of the maturity. As we said before, 
forward contracts are very popular in foreign exchange markets. Let us uh, look at this example. For example, last time when I checked on January 11, 2020, party A signs the forward contracts with party B to sell 1 million US dollar at 7.3184 uh, Turkish lira per one US dollar six months later. Today, I mean, uh, it was last week, June 11, they sign a contract, they shake hands, no money change hands. On December 11, 2020, six months from June 11, party A pays 1 million US dollar to party B and receives 7.31 million Turkish lira from party B in return. Currently, today is the June 11, the spot price for the Turkish lira is 6.8469. Six months later, we don't know the, what will be the exchange rates, but the forward price we know, 7.3184. Basically, here, we have some foreign exchange codes for Turkish Lira. Spot price 6.8386 bidding and offer ask price 6.8469 and the forward price six months, uh, seven points and 7.3184. So, as I said, the forward prices are different at different maturities. Maturity or the time to maturity refers to the length of time between now and expiry date. For example, in our Forex uh, example, the maturity is six months. The expiration date refers to the date on which the contract expires. If you use the notation forward price is just FT and small t is today and then T capital T is expiry date. And then capital T minus T time to maturity. The spot price is just the forward price today and deliver it today. Basically, as we said, forward contracts are most popular in currency and interest rates. As you see in our previous table on the foreign exchange code for Turkish Lira, the forward prices are different at different maturities. You remember here, if you look at just the offer prices, the price are spot price 6.8469, Three years forward price, 10 Turkish lira, 10.6 Turkish lira. So, the forward price for a contract is the delivery price that would be applicable to the contract if were negotiated today. It is the delivery price actually that would make the contract worth exactly zero. For example, in our example, party A agrees to sell party B 1 million US dollar at the price of 7.3184 Turkish lira per US dollar six months later. 7.3184 is the forward price. As they agree, uh, talked, the party that has agreed to buy has what is termed a long position. The party that has agreed to sell has what is termed a short position. In our example, party A entered a short position and party B entered a long position on US dollars. Party A basically is selling the US dollars. Party B is buying US dollars. Since it is on exchange rate, you can also say party A entered a long position and party B entered a short position on Turkish Lira. In this case, party A entered a long position, basically buying 
Turkish lira and selling Turkish lira. Uh, Party B is selling Turkish lira. How about the profit and loss in forward investments? In this case, by signing a forward contract, you are locking in a price ex ante for buying or selling a security. Ex post, I mean, after the uh, transaction, you can gain or lose from signing the contract, which depends on the spot price at the expiry. Let us return back to our Forex example. Party A agrees to sell 1 million US dollars at 7.3184 Turkish lira per US dollar at the expiry. If the spot price is seven Turkish lira at the expiry, what would be the profit and loss for party A? You remember on December 11, part, uh, party A can buy 1 million US dollar from the market at the spot price of se seven Turkish lira and sell it to party B per forward contract agreement at 7.3184. The net profit and loss at the expiry is the difference between the strike price, which is 7.3184 and the spot price, seven, multiplied by the notional uh, amounts. Hence, party A will make a profit of uh, 318,400 Turkish lira. What if the spot rate is, instead of seven, it is 7.5? What would be the PLN profit and loss for party A? In this case, because uh, spot rate is higher than forward, so party A should be making some loss. How uh, about the party B? In this case, derivatives market, one gain at the expense of others. So uh, it's a zero sum game. If party A is making profit, party B is making a loss in this case. Of course, there's always a small possibility that either side can default on the contract. That's why forward contracts are mainly between big institutions. This is counterparty risk. You cannot uh, eliminate in the forward contract unless uh, you go to futures market or uh, uh, swaps uh, through the central counterparty uh, exchange. Okay, here's a payoff from forward contract. For long position, as long as spot price is great, greater than delivery price, those who have long position we make profits. If the spot price is less than delivery price, you will, uh, you, if you have a long position, you make lo uh, losses. For the short position, the opposite is true. As long as spot price is greater than the delivery price, you make loss. If the spot price is less than the delivery, then you make profits. So at the maturity of such contract, the loan receives a cash payment if the spot price on the underlying asset at the delivery rate, at the delivery date is above the forward price specified in the contract. If on the other hand, spot rate or spot price is less than forward price, then the loan makes a cash payment. In some forward contracts, basically privately negotiated between the two parties, it is traded over the counter. It's a non-standard contract. You can design any way you want. You can design it to be physically delivered or cash settled. You can design at any notional value. You don't have to have, a, for example, in the crude oil uh, futures market, uh, each contract is 1,000 barrel. You don't, here you can define, okay, you want to have 1,500. You know, uh, that's, that is negotiable. Usually 
but specify one unique specified delivery date and time here. You fix the price, you predetermine the price, it is the best thing over that, and then settle at the end of the contract or expiry date. Delivery or final cash settlement usually occurs. You cannot basically in the futures market, it's very easy to offset your position by taking opposite position. Here, it is much more difficult. Of course, as I said, there are some credit risk. Either counterparty can default, so they don't want to make any payments or delivery. So there is always a, a credit risk here as opposed to futures markets. So where do you use this forward contract? Of course, you can use hedging purposes, speculation purposes, or arbitrage. This is a little bit, uh, what you call, uncertain, uh, difficult. But the primary use of a forward contract is to lock in the price at which one buys or sells a particular good in the future. This implies that the contract can be utilized to manage price risk. Forward contracts can be used to hedge against unforeseen movements in market prices. Consider an airline company, which is going to buy 100,000 barrel of oil one year from today. Suppose that forward price for the delivery in one year is $100 or let's say $100. Suppose that the yield on a one year zero coupon bond is 5%. The airline company can use a forward contract to guarantee the cost of buying oil for the next year. The present value of this cost will be 95.24. The airline company could invest this amount to buy oil in one year, or it could pay an oil supplier $100 at the expiry Deliver, uh, at the delivery of the oil. If the spot price at the end of the year is above the agreed forward price, the airline company gains from this hedging. If the spot price at maturity is below the forward price, it would lead to airline company to pay more than market price of oil. Regardless of the spots at the delivery, the airline company protects itself from potential loss and eliminates uncertainty regarding uh, price movements. Similarly, forward contract can be used for purposes. Based on your expectation of prices in the future, you either go long or short forward contract. Consider an individual who is not a producer or consumer of gold, but has an interest in gold price movements, an outright position trader uh, will come to uh, back to scalper or spread traders later, might adopt the following strategy if she believes, if she believed six months gold price were going to rise more than the market expectation, market expected. That is to say, she believes that gold prices in six months will be higher than six month forward price, which is negotiated today, of course. To take advantage of her belief about the price of gold in six months, she could buy the forward contract today, which promises to deliver gold at a lower price than her expected price in six months. If she is correct in her prediction or in her beliefs, there will be sharp rise in gold prices, which is not correctly anticipated by the market. If she is right in her prediction, she will make profit by selling her low cost gold at a higher price. If she is wrong, she incur a loss. That is why speculators have every incentive to be right in their anticipation. This is also why speculator would normally be expected to reduce 
volatility without having any impact on long-term prices. Basically, they are buying low, selling high, thereby stabilizing the markets. You can see this is the outright position. It's a directional bets. You can see that uh, this is a very risky game. More risk averse traders might trade spreads, which we will come when we are discussing futures next week. Of course, let us look, uh, talk about a little bit on the advantages and uh, forward curve. Basically, they are widely used, especially in uh, currencies and interest rates, and also uh, especially precious metals and uh, other commodities. The, it has larger volumes than exchanges, uh, exchange-traded uh, instrument, especially in Forex. They are customizable. They are not standard contract. It is flexible based on the needs of uh, clients. Of course, they can be used for hedging or speculating, speculation purposes. However, you are locking into a transaction. You cannot uh, take an offsetting position or you don't have the option not to exercise. This is a contractual agreement. You have to take delivery or you have to have a, what you call uh, cash settlement. Of course, in some case, we don't have secondary markets a very thin secondary market. There is, uh, it is difficult to find counterparty. That, uh, that's why maybe uh, these contracts are uh, mainly between big institutions or big institution and uh, clients. Of course, there's always a counterparty risk uh, you have to think about. That's why, because of this counterparty risk, forward price and future prices are sometimes different. And then of course, the transparency issues, you don't know what other players uh, position in this stock, in this market. Of course, because of the counterpart risk, as always, you are exposing yourself to market risk. Okay, let's look at uh, how the valuation of an investment in derivatives instruments made. First, let's discuss uh, valuation and investment in primary securities. The securities have direct claims to the future cash flows. Valuation is based on the forecast of future cash flow and risk. Discounted cash flow method is one. We discount all the forecasted future cash flow with a discount rate that is commensurate with the forecasted risk. Basically you do investment, you make investment if the market price is lower than the model value, sell otherwise. Both valuation and investment depends crucially on forecasted forecasts of future cash flows and risk, of course. However, in derivative securities, we are going to use different methodology. As you remember, in derivatives, payoffs are linked directly to the price of an underlying security. Valuation is mostly based on replication and hedging arguments. Uh, so you can find the portfolio that includes the underlying security and possibly other related derivatives to replicate the payoff of the target derivative security or to hedge away the risk in the derivative payoff. Since the hedged portfolio is risk-free, the payoff of portfolio can be discounted by the risk-free rate. This model, this type of valuation is called no arbitrage model. In this, the key here, we don't have any forecast. Valuation is based on cross-sectional comparison. Let's look at this. It's an arbitrage and a Mickey Mouse model. We have two assets in the spot market, asset one, uh, price of asset one is 95 and passive asset two, 43. And then of course, in the future, we have two states of the world. Good state, if in both states, but uh, in the good state, asset one is hundreds, 
asset two is 50. In the bed state, asset one is 80 and asset two is 40. Basically, in the good state, both prices are going up. In the bad state, both uh, uh, prices are going down. Do you see any possibility to make risk-free money out of this situation? This is the question. You remember here, 95 and 43, and then 100, 50, and 80, 40. Both assets, uh, we don't care about, both, both assets might be overvalued or undervalued, depending on the estimates and forecast of probability of the good state and the bad state. We don't care really. In this no arbitrage model, what we do, we look at the payoff. Payoff of asset one is twice as much as payoff of asset two in all states. 50, 100, 40, 80. Asset one is twice as asset two. Here is also 80, 40, twice as asset one. Then based on this argument, then the price of asset one should be twice as much as the asset two in the current states also. However, what we see in the current state, asset one is 91, asset two is $43. Either asset, the price of asset one is too high, the relative to price of asset two, because 4386, price of asset one is too high relative to asset two, or the price of asset two is too low relative to asset one. Basically, but I do not care whether both prices are too high or too low, given the forecasted cash flow. All you have to do to make risk free profits, you have to sell asset one and buy asset two. You are guaranteed to make money. Selling asset one alone or buying asset two alone is not enough. You have to do selling, you have to do sell assets one and buy asset two simultaneously. Then you can make risk free profits. Again, we are not focusing on the time series forecast of, of uh, prices. No arbitrage model focus on cross sectional comparison. Basically, asset one. Here, relatively expensive compared to asset two. That's why you buy uh, low, sell high uh, assets. Let us look at here, for example, uh, an example is an arbitrage opportunity if the spot price of gold is $300 and the one year forward price of gold is $340. And the one year USD, US dollar interest rate is 5% per annum, which is continuously compounding. We can apply principle of arbitrage right here. The key idea here is underlying a forward contract is to lock in a price for security. Basically forward price of a security $340. You can also lock in this price, you can buy the gold now, carry the security to the future. But when you carry the security to the future, you can buy it now, three hundred dollars. You are for you are. There is a foregone interest of five percent. You can put your three hundred dollars into a deposits. You can earn five percent interest. So you need to calculate the future value of money here. Since these two strategies, buying gold now and carrying it to future, same as buying a forward contract, they should generate the same 
profit and loss. Otherwise, you should short the expensive strategy and long the cheap strategy. And you can make risk-free profits. The expensive, basically, and cheap here is very, very relative concept. You don't care whether these assets are overvalued or undervalued. You are just looking at two portfolio. One is buying gold today and carrying it to next year. The other one is just buying a forward contract. As we said, since signing a forward contract is equivalent to buying the security and carrying it to the maturity, the forward price should equal to the cost of buying the security and carrying it over to maturity, which is forward price should be equal to your spot price plus cost of carry. This can include interest rates or if you need to store, maybe you are buying an oil, you need to store it. That's also your costs and the benefits of carry. It can be, uh, we are going to come to that one later on for the oil market or something, convenience yields, because you like to have the commodity uh, in your disposal, because you might be expecting some kind of uh, future shortages. So it's better to have a uh, commodity at hand that provides you additional benefits, what we call as benefits of carry or uh, convenience yield. But forget the benefits of carry right now. We are talking about gold. There is no uh, storage cost also. The only cost is the interest for gone. We need to apply the principle of arbitrage. You need to buy low and sell high. Here, one year later at the expiry of the cost of signing the contract, uh, forward contract now is $340. The cost of buying the gold now, $300, and then carrying it to over maturity, you need to incur interest rate cost because we spend the money now instead of uh, one year later. If it is uh, continues to compounding, this costs you $315.38. Basically, buying the gold now, carrying it to the future is cheaper than buying a forward contract. That's why basically buying gold now and carrying it to expiry is cheaper than the signing the contract. So you buy gold now, today, and short the forward contract. In this way, you can make a profit of uh, approximately, what, $25 or something. So th this is risk-free profits. You don't have to worry about it. That's why uh, if there are a lot of arbitrageurs and everything, so the price of forward should be equal to actually future value of money. As we said, carrying costs, there is the interest rate cost. If you buy today, instead of a tax pre, we endure interest rate costs. In principle, we can save the money in the bank today and earn interest if we can buy it later. This amounts to calculating the future value of today's cash at the current interest rates. If the compounding is annual rather than continuous, it is ST one plus R, it is 315. If it is uh, compounding continuously, 315 something. And then of course, we talk about storage costs. We assume zero costs for gold, but it could be positive. Think of forward price of live hogs or chicken or uh, live cattle, or think of forward price of electricity. The storage cost is so high. How are you going to calculate the forward price? Or weather, I mean, there is no uh, storage on that, uh, it is difficult. So let us look at here an example on oil markets. Basically, um, let us assume that there is no convenience yield. There is no uh, benefit of holding oil at your uh, disposal provides you any value. The spot price of oil, let us assume 19, 
the one year forward price of oil 25, USD interest rate is 5%, which is continues to compounding. The annualized storage cost of oil 2%, which is also continuously compounding. So do you see any uh, arbitrary opportunity here? Basically risk-free opportunity. The spot price is 19. You can buy and buy oil right now. You can store it for each barrel. You pay 2% uh, storage, but you are also for uh, foregone interest 5%. This is about future value of money is about 19, uh, basically 20.38, which is showing future value of money, including the storage cost is lower than the forward price. In this case, yes, there is an arbitrary opportunity. Basically, F forward price is greater than the future value of money. In this case, uh, forward contract is expensive. You should sell the forwards, buy the oil right now, carry it, the, your total cost $20 something, and then you can sell this oil to at a forward 25, making about $5 uh, profit per barrel. Sorry. So if, okay. As I said, for many commodities, there is a storage cost, uh, oil and but uh, natural gas and all the stuff, but there is no storage cost associated with precious metal. In this case, F is equal to just the future value of money, uh, interest cost included. If there is storage cost, future forward contract should be equal to future value of money in taking into account interest rate cost plus the storage costs. If of course, storage cost is different from zero. And other commodities, all we can say is the uh, inequality F should be less than the future value of uh, money, which we will come uh, when we are discussing the futures, uh, pricing of the futures. So, the real, uh, as we said, the inequality refers to the actually convenience yields. Basically, there are business reasons for holding commodities, which is non-monetary return, that is sometimes referred as convenience yield. Here, I call it negative income. So, where why is the why it represent the convenience yield? The convenience yield here reflects the market's expectation concerning the availability of commodity. If you are thinking uh, in the future, there's going to be shortage of oil, then convenience yield today is much higher than uh, the pre uh, previous stuff. The greater the possibility of that shortages will occur, the higher the convenience yields. Anyway, uh, this week we covered uh, forward markets what we mean by a forward and then how we can use forward to hedge or speculate and then advantages and disadvantages of uh, forwards. And finally, we cover very brief overview of how we price using no arbitrage principle, how we price forward contract. Next week, we will discuss futures, which is very similar to uh, forwards but exchange traded, and it is much more, uh, I mean, provides much more transparency and much more information. We will define what is a feature. We will look at contract specification, settlement price, volume, and open interests. And then we will discuss types of orders uh, uh, because in the forward market, there's no clearing house. That's why we had the, uh, Counterparty risk. Futures markets have clearing house and marking to market, 
That's why that eliminates the counterparty risk. The risk is always with the clearing house, so you don't have to worry about counterparty uh, not fulfilling their contract or their uh, contractual agreements. Your counterparty is actually the clearing house itself. So, and then we will look at how we can use futures for hedging and speculation purposes. And finally, we will discuss a uh, very small, one, one kind of a risk, very uh, important uh, risk basis risk. So uh, thank you so much. I'll uh, complete, I finished my presentation here. If there are any question, I can uh, answer. Let me go back to. Hojam, I think we don't have any questions. All right, that's perfect. I can close now. Yeah, we can end the session. Thank you for watching us.